Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper and today I want to talk to you about the importance of succession sowing, especially if you're trying to maximize your growth potential, your uh, self-sufficiency, your capabilities as a gardener. It is so important. I put it right up there with saving seeds. If you're a gardener and you're not saving your own seeds, you are missing out on just the next level of taking care of yourself, of ensuring you're gonna have good, healthy, nutritious food for years to come, and really, just like I said, maximizing your growth potential. You get seeds that are better uh, capable to grow and thrive in your area, in your zone, on your property. It's a wonderful experience from the youngest children to the oldest adults. It's fun, it's easy, and it's worthwhile. But in this video, we're talking about succession sowing. If you look here, this is an absolute wall of Chinese red noodle beans. If I grab this, what do I got? I don't know, that's almost 10 of them right here in my hand. And these things get a lot longer than this. Check them out real quick. These beautiful vining plants. I just saw a hummingbird up on here. You can see a little butterfly. Center screen right there. They'll put out a couple, oh yeah, thanks for coming in. See, it's got this full bean growing here. And then it's got those couple coming in. I can pick this bean off soon enough and then it'll produce the next ones and it'll just keep going and going and going. Here you see two of them forming, getting the next ones pollinated already. They just do this over and over and over again all summer long. This will go on sometimes for three or four months on our homestead and look at the size of those guys. This is an absolute wall. I did train them up a little bit higher, which is important. Oh yeah, now we got more butterflies cruising through. And for some reason, too, they must be sweet or something. The ants like to help with the pollination of these. And if you let them get really big, I guess they'll have to step around. If you let them get really big, they go to seed. When they get like this, just let them go to seed. Now, one thing that I think is really cool about this is that soon we're going to have a kind of hard time keeping up with this. A lot of times we harvest our noodle beans on a daily or bi-daily basis. We're either every day or every other day, we're out here grabbing a handful. And a cool thing is they eat good raw. The kids love them from uh, Bell Pepper, our one-year-old, uh, Buddy Pepper, our three-year-old, to the older children. They love them just fresh from the garden, no dressing, no nothing. Another thing is they freeze well. And then another thing is uh, they're great pickled. They really, really are. And I enjoy just pickling a bunch of them. A great way to save them. Nice thing too is when you got them this long, you're able to, if you're doing a quart jar, well then you cut them the length of a quart jar. Leave about that inch of head space and cut them that length. And then make a jar off to the side that's just a bunch of chopped up little pieces. Or if you're doing pints, cut them that size. They really work well and uh, a lot of fun. Very versatile and they really thrive and do incredible for us. So very blessed and happy to have them. But if I rewind it a couple months, there was a different crop here. So I'm gonna back up just a little bit and take a peek at what was going on where this wall is. Got peas running here. And the goal in this area is to get two harvests. Let the peas run up now, and then I'll plant something else to cover this. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna plant on this fence. That trellis there will probably be Chinese red noodle beans. So this is a fence line. Eventually I'm gonna grow some beans up it, I believe. But right now it's got peas on it. And here's some mandan bride corn here and here. This stuff we're hoping to uh, use to make some of our own cornmeal this year. And uh, it's a 60 day corn, so it goes really quick. It's kind of a short, small, compact plant. A little volunteer cilantro in there. And then there's peas over here with some sorghum in the middle. And a whole bunch of peas over here too, and uh, you know, I've got a lot more to go. One thing I did is I pretty much planted peas everywhere that I had trellises. And then as you see here, as these peas get up and over, I'm going to have these Chinese red noodle beans that are starting to grow ready come take it over after them. 
So, go way to get multiple crops from the same thing. So in all honesty, I kind of cheated when I planted my peas. I figured that they would know the right time to sprout. So I planted them like midwinter. And I left them there in the soil and figured when it got warm enough and moist enough and everything was appropriate, that the peas would know when it was the appropriate time for them to sprout. And they did. So that being said, I really got a good long harvest of peas. It was very difficult for us to keep up with. And in fact, there was a time where if you looked around our garden, there was peas growing almost everywhere on every vertical trellis, everywhere you could find from the cold hardy kiwi vines to over here to where I grow my snake gourds this year. There was just peas everywhere because I knew I could get a nice early harvest of the peas. They were growing on my grape trellises. I've got grape trellises where it's a bed of uh, strawberry plants and then there's grapes growing over that. And the one thing too is in the heat of summer, the open beds of strawberries really got hit hard just by being dry, by being out in the sun. But the ones that were shaded by the grapevines were still thriving. So it kind of shows how that companion planting, even with perennials, can increase your harvest and help out the plants. But I knew that it'd be a while for that grape to put forth its leaves. I knew it'd be a while before the strawberry plants really got going, so I planted peas in there. They covered the trellis, the strawberries started coming up. By the time the peas were fading out, the um, grapes were putting on their leaves. And at that point, we were able to kind of switch crops. Same thing here. Those peas knew when to wake up. They grew really hard. They did an amazing job. We had a hard time, even this wall, keeping up with this wall, and it was amazing. If we were heading somewhere or bringing a dish to somebody, we'd bring them a pile of, you know, peas. Either just the, the raw full pot, like snow peas that you could just dip in some dip or eat raw like that. Or we'd make different dishes. I was using peas as a base for a salad. Taking the peas, you can eat the whole pod. Dicing them up. Having that be the base of the salad before our lettuce was really mature. And then adding in some other things. And it was so tasty. It was so good. Trying to get creative to, when you're cranking out that much food to make sure to put it all to use. So now, I planted these a little later than I would because I was waiting for the peas to finish. At this point, I've still got some that I'm actually putting in. I think they've got time to produce. But now we've got this wall, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a handful. I'm just gonna stick to the left side. They're growing on the right too. I already grabbed this one noodle bean, but I'm gonna show you real quickly how this works and how much stuff is coming out of here and then I want you to think that I had a hard time keeping up with the peas just months ago. Now we're getting an incredible harvest of beans off of the same, the same garden space. Plus I've got some other stuff mixed in here too. Wow. So on my end, when I think about this and getting this many of these every day or two, it's absolutely amazing. These would have been great even if I left them another day. They would have been longer, they would have been fatter, they would have still been completely edible. But, you know, rather than just getting this harvest, I got that giant harvest of peas. Rather than just getting the giant harvest of peas, I got this harvest. In fact, we saved a lot of seeds for those peas and we're gonna be planting those again soon probably in the same spot and getting three harvests this year. And this was just one handful of both sides of this one raised bed. There's an outside fence and an inside fence. They grow up each and kind of meet in the middle and it allows me to harvest a lot more of these. Plus I can plant things in between them. Like I got a tomato, there's some pepper plants, carrots, other things like that too. So I want to show you too that I've not depleted my supply. Look at what's left here. So if we look up this thing, there is plenty more that'll be coming in these next couple days as well. This guy probably should have been picked, but I didn't, so I'll save him for later. All these guys, and one thing I really like about this variety, first of all, these flowers are beautiful, but they are color-coded. You can get some yard-long beans, you can get like some uh, green noodle beans, but then the actual beans look a lot like these. They look like the vines. They look like these, so it's kind of harder to differentiate. Here, this makes it so much easier. So I've got this whole wall still cranking out. Two days from now, they'll be ready for me. Look at that, 
Here's like another 10 of them almost. This one little section. And same thing in here, there's just more of them coming in, coming in, coming in. And one thing I will point out if you're growing noodle beans, they prefer an upright to run around. They're doing really good on the back side of there. And then here where they're all horizontal, um, they're struggling more and I'm kind of, I'm training them up a little bit more. Um, they have a harder time running themselves. But yeah, look at that. Just more, 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 more. Now guys, of course, planting peas and then planting something else, that's a pretty simple way of succession sowing, of growing a crop as it starts to fade out, planting the next one, as that new one starts to come up, removing that old one, letting that new one take over, and then doing it again, doing it again. In some places, you can just get year-round harvests by just continually throwing things or growing things, but then also, um, if you kind of plant the same plant multiple times, sometimes that's going to help. Things like cilantro, you're going to want to plant that, then you're going to want to plant that, then you're going to want to plant that. Things like radishes, you're going to want to do that as well. If you plant them all at once, you harvest them all at once, that leaves some pretty big gaps. Um, dill would be another one. If you start your dill and you start your pickles early in the year, a lot of times your dill is going to be done and gone by the time your cucumbers really start producing. So if you space out your uh, planting, that's going to help you a lot. I've got to take care of these. This is just one easy way of doing it. Um, right now, I'm going to list my Chinese red noodle bean seeds again. We're still selling walking onions at the moment. I took all the bulb bills that I had. We listed them in Etsy. It's the only thing we got right now, but lately, for everyone who's ordered those, I've also thrown in some wild garlic bulb bills. I've also thrown in some dill seed, and I've also thrown in some Chinese red noodle bean seed. But I think these noodle beans, a couple of our books, and um, probably some of the mini bell peppers are going to be some of the earliest ones we work on. And we'll probably throw in some freebies like some kale seeds or purple lady bok choy or other things like that as well. Just because we like throwing those freebies in for anyone out there who's trying to invest in their future, in their garden, in their property, in their nutrition, and their diet, and their health. So here's this. I will give you just one cute little example of taking care of these raw, and then we will uh, shut this down. Oh, here he is. Look who just rolled up. Bugger, what are these? Noodle beans. Noodle beans. What do they taste like? Do they taste good? Yeah. You want to show them how you do that? Look at them go. Look at them go. This guy will eat these all day long, right? Yeah. And if I'm canning them, whatever uh, doesn't go in the can, he's there quick to gobble up. A lot of times the heads and the ends I don't put in when I pickle them. But this guy just shows up and takes care of them. And do you like them cooked too? Yeah. Yep. And you like them pickled? Yeah. And you like them raw? Yeah. Without even any salad dressing? No. No? Even without salad dressing even. So, yeah, very tasty. How do you want to shut down the video? Do you want to tell them thanks for watching Bugger Out? Thank you. You watching Bugger Out.